Hello all and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about how we can train a document classifier using Layout LM version 2. So document classifier is actually a very uh, new kind of problem or it's a very uh, different kind of problem uh, in a financial world uh, where we have to classify a particular document uh, into a particular category. So a document, a doc, a document uh, must be having uh, such kind of data where you have, you must be a image, you must be given an image, you must be having given a PDF, and in that particular PDF, you must be having a lot of uh, uh, pages in it, and in that pages we would be having a lot of text. So according to those information, we need to classify that okay, this particular document belongs to such some category. But if you see. Uh, into the recent uh, developments inside uh, document understanding layout lm has been doing a better job in terms of document understanding so that's where our document uh, uh, classifier uh, will help us to understand uh, whether this particular document or image document belongs to any kind of category that we want to tell you so let's suppose if we didn't have this particular uh, version of it uh, we what we could have done we could have done uh, like we could have taken uh, normal image classifier models and we have just we could have just taken this uh, particular image of a particular uh, document and would have, we would have trained a image classifier document by using uh, some VGGNet or you can say any ResNet or you can say any DenseNet model and could have trained a normal image classifier model and by that you would be would, you would be able to predict whether this particular document is of such some categories but there is some demerit of using that particular way. It's not the wrong way, but it's a it's not the best way also. So what what actually we are missing on that side is we are able to pass the document into that particular VGG net and we are able to train a model, image classify model, but we are not able to utilize the text inside that particular document or image. We are just passing that image to a classify model asking them to uh, uh, classify into some categories but we we also have that text information that has to be considered for proper context and understanding of that particular document so that's the demerit of it of using a normal image classifier and using a layout lm version uh, 2 classifier so in layout lm version 2 what happens is uh, you you also consider the text portion of it. So it's a kind of a multi-model where you also take the image embedding of a document and also the text embedding of a document and then you combine those two informations and then you train a model to classify into a particular category. So this uh, both world of computer vision and plus NLP world when get mixed up into a, into, into a particular model that's where the enhancement of a uh, classifier will be, right? So this part, this part of information, this two, this information of image and information of text, when both of this uh, information get combined, and when these two information get combined in contextual working, then a contextual embeddings will be created according to these two informations, and accordingly we can uh, classify a um, uh, document into a better way instead of just going. In a simple uh, train, simple training of image classifier. In, in, in image classifier, we might not be able to uh, gather around the text information. We must, we just must be taking the image embeddings. But, but over there, we are just not, we are not considering about the uh, text part of it. So hence, uh, layout LM utilizes both of the information into a single model and train a classifier model accordingly. So this layout LM model will be very helpful to understand the document. So you can see on the screen, this is a document available and you can see this is a document from a, some, some PDF and it has uh, a text inside it, paragraphs. And like, likewise, we can have many kind of documents uh, with same kind of uh, paragraphs. But to identify whether this belongs to a particular category or not, or some category or not, we should also use this text information. So that's where uh, the layout LM will help us. So if you go into the architecture of layout LM model, 
you can see this is from the uh, paper's code uh, you can just go and uh, uh, read about this particular layout and exposure too. It's a very good uh, representation of the embeddings. Uh, you can read about this paper uh, in papers with code. So here is the architecture. So if you see, this is the document image and it just takes uh, the embedding of this image document and it also takes the uh, text from this particular image document. So you can see the image embeddings has been created like this. If we are seeing that as a feature maps and here on the right hand side you can see the text has been taken care of. so from this image the text has been extracted now these two information the image information and the text information goes into a single transform model so like you can see here the visual representation of uh, image has been added with the text has been added so these two informations are being added to the model plus 2D position embedding is being passed. So what is this 2D position embedding? 2D position embedding is nothing but the position of a text in an image. So if suppose there is a text XYZ, so what is the position of that particular text in, a, in that particular image? So that information is being passed for each and every word. And that's how the 2D position embedding is being uh, also taken care. So in, in layout LM model, in short, we just pass image embeddings, text embeddings, and text, uh, uh, in, 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 I shouldn't say text embeddings, I, we should say a text uh, is being passed and the uh, image is being passed, and plus the bonding box information of the text is being passed. And that's how uh, the, the, the information is being uh, encoded and passed into the transform model, and it by using the self-attention mechanisms, it understands the text as well as the image information. So it learns uh, image embeddings plus the text embeddings. And li likewise, it creates a total Im information consolidation on a particular layer. And by that information, we are able to classify into a particular category, whether it's a, it's a, it's a XYZ document or ABC document. So that's how we can classify by using the transform layer. So that's the benefit we are getting uh, using the uh, layout LM model compared to the uh, normal image classifier model if we would have used VG classifier or ResNet classifier over here. So that's the advantage of using the layout LM version 2. So now let's go and uh, uh, train and check how this uh, uh, model gets, get, gets trained generally. So this is a simple use case uh, where we will be using a normal data set which is called RVL CDIP, which is very standard data set available on the internet. So I'm using that. So it, it has got a lot of huge data in it. So right now I'm not using all the data. So for this, I am just trying to use uh, each categories, a single image file, just for this tutorial I'm using. You can take uh, all the images from this, you can download this data set, you can use all the categories and all the images and you can train a model but for this tutorial to make it very uh, easy and short i am just taking each and every categories and a single image for each and every categories so we'll train this model in this particular tutorial so now first we'll install all these dependencies so in in my working environment i have already installed these dependencies you just have to run off this uh, dependencies and and uh, you just have to install all these dependencies and once you have installed all these dependencies you have to just download the, the data set from this uh, link and it will have one example per class so this uh, example is having uh, one example one example per class so once you download this uh, rbl cdip for, uh, folder you can see uh, on your uh, environment a folder of will be created a folder of rbl cdip dataset will be created so if you open this you can see there are a lot of classes available so the uh, image data uh, available for this advertisement class so some document uh, of advertisement must be there some uh, document of budget will be there some document of email will be there so you can see a lot of images being uh, uh, one image or, or you can say a single example of an image is being given for each and every class so likewise we want to uh, classify uh, given a document whether it belongs to advertisement budget email file underscore folder form invoice so like 
according to this any kind of category it should belong to right uh, given a document so that's what we want to classify and you can see these are different type of documents and they have different uh, context different kind of text presented therefore if you would have used this simple uh, this particular data set with simple image classifier you would have been giving a lot of false positive because it is not considering the uh, text information but since we are using layout lm version 2 this all uh, uh, categories have their different text and different image patterns and that's what it going to learn and that's how it going to differentiate between these these categories properly so you can see a lot of categories are there so we're going to use this categories and each category has one sample image and we're going to use this to train our model i think that's clear now once we have the data we can see this uh, data from one of the folder we are viewing it from the resume uh, class a uh, single resume class so this is from a resume uh, class one image is being given so you can see someone's resume is present here and now what we're going to do is as a process to start with uh, layout lm so as i told you uh, we are going to take the text information and the image information so for image we already have this image but from this we also need to extract the text so that we can give it to the model right so for that we have to uh, take up this image and use that ocr to extract the text from the particular image so that's what it is doing here in this particular whole text and with the text i am also extracting uh, bonding box information of each every text so what does that bonding box information means is i will be extracting this text from this whole page plus the bonding box information or means the location of the uh, each word in an image so let's suppose this is a my my is a word so what is the location of this my word in this particular image similarly the name word in uh, position of the name word in this particular image so likewise i i am trying to extract the text information plus the uh, position of the image or position of the word in an image i am trying to extract so that's what this code is doing so this will just extract the text and uh, get the uh, bonding box information from it so let's just run this particular uh, uh, set of code so you can see it has extracted the word from it now uh, bonding box information is also been extracted and it has been stored uh, in this particular ocr_df that is data frame right for each and every word the uh, bonding box information has been stored now this whole process this whole process is is can be you can you can do it manually like how i showed it and this whole process can also be done in one shot by using hugging face layout lm version 2 processor class so from transformers you have to import layout lm version 2 feature extractor layout lm version 2 tokenizer and layout lm 2 version processor these three things we have to uh, extract so now from from layout lm version 2 feature extractor uh, we are going to do the same process what we did here so layout lm version 2 feature extractor will take the image will take the image as an input and it will extract the text from it and plus the bonding box information of each and every text in there so in short a single line of code will help you do the same processing what we did here right and similarly uh, we have to use the tokenizer so layout lm tokenizer we are going to use we have uh, this uh, layout lm mo model has already been already trained on some huge data set so we are going to use that tokenizer uh pretain tokenizer from uh, hugging face library and we are going to import that using layout lm version 2 tokenizer from pretain models that's what we are going to do and now we are going to club up this two information that is feature extractor information and tokenizer information into the layout lm version 2 processor so this uh, uh, processor uh, class will just a, will be a wrapper around the two processes that is uh, feature extraction plus the tokenizing of it so in feature extraction we extract the text and its bonding box information and in tokenizer step we tokenize all the extracted text information that's what we're going to pass we are going to pass into the transform model right the tokenized version and 
a processor will help us to overlay all this. So you can see this is a layout element version two processor, and inside this we are going to pass feature extractor as a tokenizer, and it is a overlay over this two, uh, these two uh, parameters that we have passed, and hence uh, this processor is ready. So let's just run this particular thing, and in one shot we can just encode the input of a particular image. So you can see uh, I am just going to pass this processor. You, I am going to use this processor and pass an image, a uh, sample image to this to try out whether this is working or not. So it will return the encoded uh, encoded text of a particular image. So let's just run this and let's visualize or, or see how this input will be looking like. So let me just uh, uh, check the items present in this particular encoded in input. You can see uh, we have uh, four to five type of inputs available. Uh, you can see input IDs, uh, bonding box information, token type IDs, attention marks, and image uh, embedding. So this uh, uh, layout element feature extractor uh, and plus a layout element version two processor are helping us to extract this many information from a particular image. You can see input IDs, bonding box information, token types, attention marks, and also the image embedding. So all this information are being inside this particular encoded input. And this is just for a single image. This is just for trial, I'm just showing it up. Now, after this, we're going to do it for a lot of images available here. Now, uh, we're just going to decode the same encoded input to just check it out whether this, this is working fine or not. The same input, encoded input, I'm passing it here. Uh, inside this process.decode function. So let us run this to check it out. You can see we are able to decode it properly by using this uh, processor uh, tokenizer decoding function and we are able to decode the encoded input. Right? So now we did a uh, single image, we did all this thing for single image, right? This all processing and everything, decoding and encoding inputs we did for a single image. Now we want to do it for all the images that are present in this particular data set. Right? So for that, we are going to use a data set class from the hiking page library. So in that class, what we have to do is we have to prepare a, a, a PyTorch data set loader by using that data set class so that we can process all these, all these particular data set available or images available and store it in a format of a, a PyTorch a Torch data set, right? Data loader format. That's what we are going to do over here. So we are, just, we are just going to take up the image and convert into the encoded input and then encoded input will be converted into the data loader class of torch. That's what we are going to do. So for that, first we have to uh, know how many labels are available or we can say how many classes are available. So by that, we are just going to understand, okay, these are the number of labels or these are the number of uh, categories available. So uh, for that only, we are just writing up these steps. Okay, uh, these, are the, these are the labels available in this particular folder and and we are converting those labels into the some number of IDs, uh, like an, in a numerical format we are converting into. So this set of code will help us to do that. So let's just visualize it, what I'm talking about. So you can see uh, each and every category now is represented with some number. That's what we are going to do. It is rep represented using label to IDs. So we say that it has been converted to label to IDs. Now, once we have this done, uh, the labels are converted to the IDs. Now, what we're going to do is, we're just going to take up the image and 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 with image path we are going to prepare a data frame which will have its image path as a one column and another column as a label what that particular image belongs to so this set of code will help us to prepare the data frame uh, in the, of which two columns having one one column is as image path and another column is as a label so let's run this code and visualize it what i am talking about so you can see uh, we have this data set available data frame and this label. So you can see uh, for each uh, label or for each uh, image, we have some label available. That's what the data is, uh, data set is about. And why we are doing this? To prepare a da uh, PyTorch data set loader. So we are using a data frame format to convert into that PyTorch data set loader format. So this is one of the way to do it. So that's why this is the easiest way to do it. So we are going to do it in that way. So now once our data set is prepared, uh, which has image path and uh, label, so we are going to use a uh, data set class from uh, PyTorch or sorry, or from the hugging face. And then from uh, this data set class, we are going to uh, convert this into a hugging face data set format. 
So from this data set dot from pandas, we are going to pass the, this data frame inside this and we will pass this and we will get that hugging face data set object. So let us run this. And you can see, let me run this up. You can see now it has been converted into the uh, data set format, which is required format to get it converted into the PyTorch data set into the so once this is set up, this setup is done. Now we have to specify uh, what other things has to be done, right? So for this, uh, we have to, like I, I, I just showed you at the top, uh, we are taking the image, we are converting into the text and, uh, and encoding the input. So the same thing we have to do it for this all images that we have mentioned here. So that's what it is doing here in this whole set of code. This is what we are doing. So you can see we have this function process underscore data which will take up these images all the images present present inside this data data set and it will process the input process each and every image and encode the the image passed into it and it will return the encoded so this is the function it is doing and similarly you can see the feature class so this is nothing but uh, the, the features that I showed you right here this is the input ID box, uh, box bonding box token type so we are just uh, specifying the uh, the properties of this particular uh, uh, information, encoded information. So that's what we are setting it up here. You can see for the features, we are going to convert into the image, input IDs, attention mask, and its respective properties we are trying to convert. Uh, what type of uh, data type should be, and uh, what kind of data value it should be having, and how much how much size it should be having for each and every class. So that's what we are we are trying to uh, pass this because a uh, layout LM model expects expect something some something like this kind of uh, uh, settings available for each and every uh, input types or encoded types so that's why we are setting it up it's very very default available on the uh, on the internet uh, to be understood and this is a, uh, some similar setting we have done and we have prepared a function to do the processing and encode the image and and this all things has to be applied into the data set that we have prepared at, at the top so this is a data set you can see and now we are using map function and we'll process the we'll, we'll pass this process data function inside it and we'll pass the data set columns available and features also features means this features of some uh, uh, categories or you can say the features of, of specific types we have passed inside this as a as an argument and now we are specifying batch underscore true and we are specifying the batch size so that's what so for the data set that we have prepared as a data frame now we are mapping it to some function that is process underscore data that we have prepared it. Now it will convert the each and every image into the encoded format. That's what it will return. You can see it will return the encoded data set. So it, this data set will have all the encoded information for all this image that we have uh, mentioned in that particular data. Now let's run this particular set so that we can see uh, how, uh, how many data set it will do. Uh, so how many images it will take up and it will process all those images uh, into a data set and once it is done uh, we can uh, take up this encoded input and pass it to that model so that we can train our custom model on this data set and likewise you can do it for all your own data set so if you have like millions of data sets or let's say thousands of data sets thousands of images for a particular class then you can train a model uh, using that particular thousand of thousand images and prepare a data set a data frame such kind of data frame and and uh, convert into the data set format that is required and then encode uh, it into a particular format a particular data type and that's how you want to convert it and uh, get the encoded data set uh, so this encoded data set, data set will have all the image and its encoded image so uh, once this encoded data set is ready we have to convert it into the torch Format so let's just run, run it so it, it will like it is nothing but it will convert into a tensor it will convert all the encoded input into a tensor of torch so once this encoded data set is ready because it's a data set now we want to convert into data loader so we'll import a torch and from torch.utils we have data dot data loader so we'll pass this encoded data set and we'll uh we'll 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 press a data loader for the training of model using torch so let's run this code and let's just see uh, the output size of this particular data set so you can see uh, the image uh, is of four four number that has that is since we have specified the four uh, batch size so it's, it is taking a uh, batch wise uh, sprinting about the batch wise uh, items you can see four images 
three uh, three cells, uh, three uh, channels, and two uh, two twenty four as an image size. So likewise, we have information for all these four uh, image, and you can see a uh, token type. You can see it, uh, LM layout LM model has five hundred total uh, token size as a restriction. So you can see uh, even though we have a lot of text, but it will restrict to the five hundred total tokens. So this is a text information that's coming up here. And even body box information you can see. And even you can see the label information. Is this label information as well? It is saying that it's category four. So it must be something four with label. What is the number of four? Uh, you can see it's a letter. So that's what it is showing. The number of uh, okay, it's showing the number of four uh, labels available here. So now we'll decode this particular batch, and let's just see how the output is. You can see uh, the text has been. Shared and you can see uh, encoded input also be printed. You can see the padded output. Uh, this is an encoded input which is done by uh, tokenizer. You can see class uh, tag has been added at the, at the first and the padding output has been added at the last. So that's what uh, it has done. And uh, let's just convert this into the ID. You can see it's a budget uh, text we are showing it here. So this text is coming from the budget class. That means uh, some budget image must be there. Uh, yeah, so from this image the text is coming up here and this is the class for it Now we have the uh, ready. We have the data ready converted into that PyTorch data data format Now we have to just define the model load the model and just stream the model So for this we have a simple step So to use the classification or to use uh, to do the document classification from hugging face transformers You have to import layout LM version 2 sequence classification class that is what we are going to use and from this sequence, uh, sequence classification class you have to load up the layout element version 2 model and you have to specify the labels the number of labels so you remember we have uh, at the top we have got the number of labels available so that's what i am using the number of labels available the length of number of labels and we are going to pass this model to the uh, to, to the device that is uh, a gpu so that's what we are going to uh, do and it's going to load up the model in, inside the GPU and let us wait for a few seconds so you can see it has printed the architecture of layout and model 2 that's not required if you want you can go into the particular uh, into the particular uh, research paper and you can read about it now uh, once we have loaded the model we have the data ready now we have to just use simple PyTorch uh, way of training the model you can also use Hugging Face Trainer also to train a model. It's also a way. But here we are just going to check on to the basic level of uh, by, by using the basic PyTorch. And we are going to train a document classifier by using the basic PyTorch. So here we are loading, we have already loaded up the model. So now this, this particular step is for uh, uh, um, uh, for getting the optimizers, optimizers specified and this loading up the data loaders, how many uh, batches are available or how many training steps we have to perform and then how many number of epochs so right now I'm just giving 10 epochs and we have to just specify the model or train so it's the basic way of training a PyTorch model and then for each epoch you have to pass uh, image in, inside the model you can see uh, each batch is being passed into the model and output has been generated and then we have to calculate the loss of the output and then you have to measure you have to also store this uh, loss output into some uh, defined uh, global steps and then uh, we have to uh, we have to predict the outcome outcome of this particular output uh, or, uh, model output and then we have to uh, check the prediction whether it's a prediction is correct with the uh, two labels or not and then we have to do the we have to calculate the uh, gradients by using loss dot backward and then uh, we have to update the uh, gradient by using the optimizer so these are the basic steps that are generally a uh, PyTorch uh, training with the PyTorch is available, and hence we are going to do that. We are going to just use this way. We can also train. You can avoid all these steps by just using a uh, hugging face trans uh, hugging face trainer library, and you can train a model using hugging face trainer. That's also a possible way. It's a very easier way also, but this is just a basic way to train a PyTorch model. So hence I, uh, we are going to use this. And let us run this. We are going to run this for 10 epochs. So let us see how the model is being trained. So we have to wait for 10 epochs to get it trained. So it might take few seconds to get it done. So let us wait for it.
Okay, so I think it has trained and you can see the training accuracy is 100% which is I'm not sure which, which is which is very correct because uh, this model might have overfit because we have just taken uh, one sample per class. So I'm not I'm not very uh, correct about this particular uh, um, uh, right now the accuracy. But yeah, for this tutorial, you can understand like uh, if we have large number of data set or uh, large number of images, we could have uh, uh, more information available. But for this tutorial, just to keep it very simple, I have taken single example. So let's not worry about the accuracy part, although it has got a lot of ac good accuracy at this point. Um, it, it might be overfitting so we don't have to consider about this but this is the way we can train a model and once we have the model trained and the accuracy is available then uh, we can save this model by using torch.save method and you can save the model and you can reload the model and you can uh, do the inferencing part but for this uh, we are going to do the inferencing part uh, the model which is available we have to, what we have trained here so for this we are going to do the we are going to take the image that we have taken at the top and for the same image we are going to we are going to process whatever the processing we have done done for the training time to extract the text to take the image embeddings and to encode it the same processing we have to do it for the for the image that the, for the new image that we are going to bring into the model so the same image is being passed to the processor that we have already created at the top and we are, we are going to encode this and we are, once this encoded input is available we can pass this to the model so you can see uh, we are we are passing this uh, this encoded input to this particular model that we have trained and we are going to check the output so let's run this particular set of code and we'll get the output and once the output is available uh, we can uh, check the uh, logits available like which class it belongs to so you can see we have uh, one row and 15 predictions available that's fine because we have 15 classes for each class we, have, we, must, we must be having prediction but from that particular uh, predictions we must be having the probabilities right so from those uh, uh, probabilities we should we should select the maximum probability available for which class so that's what it this is doing logis.argmax minus one which is going to take up the uh, maximum uh, available uh, probability from all these 15 predictions and then it going to return the index of that particular uh, predicted uh, probability where it is located so that's what it will do and once it is available we will convert that into the label by using id2 label that we have created at the top so let us run this and let's see what is the prediction so you can see uh, this is the resume class so we pass this image to this model and we got this as a resume class likewise if you pass another kind of image which which we have trained for so what it will do is it will take the image embeddings, it will take the text embeddings, it will take the body box information for each and every text and encode it and train and, and pass it to the model, train model and we will get the output and after that we just convert it to the label to uh, ID to the label and we will get the prediction. So that's how it is. That's how uh, we, are, we are using the two uh, information of text as well as image. We are not just using the image information, we are also using text information to classify a document and uh, for financial kind of documents, for any PDF kind of document to be classified, this is the way you should go and process the document and classify it. So this is the best way of doing it right now available. And uh, if you're using image classifier, maybe you should avoid doing that. It might be good for some cases, but it might not work for the all scenario. We have to use the text uh, information as well with the image information to get, uh, to get it classified in a better way. So that's all about this particular video. Hope you liked it. Please do subscribe to the channel and support the channel. Thank you.